much and see it afterwards. So hi everybody, this, the, the, the basic goal of this meeting is to start the review process for the virtual network subsystem. I realized the document, you know, circulated just a few days ago. It's probably not enough time to review everything. So the thought here is to go through this document, discuss the key ideas and key approaches, and then uh, basically leave a comment period open for a couple of days to let people, or potentially even set up a second round of review to address some of the comments. Does that sound reasonable? And so, the, I guess starting with use cases, the, the idea for the, you know, coming up with a virtual network subsystem or basically giving the most capability to be able to create virtual networks is motivated by a number of different use cases. Um, specifically, you know, at a high level, the idea is to be able to create uh, virtual SDN networks that can be given to tenants and then tenants can then program these networks. Um, specifically, it's, this is something that's wanted by the M code use case, which want to, um, where a provider may want to use a, their own physical network infrastructure and potentially share it with other, you know, um, other lower tier providers or, 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 or customers. And also in the context of the e-court use case, um, the idea is to, for the virtual network systems to be able to support the federation concept where uh, uh, one controller may expose the virtual network to another, um, uh, potentially in a hierarchy or in a mutual hearing agreement. Now, um, I'm not gonna read this document, but just at a high level, um, there's different approaches to, uh, to provide virtual, virtual um, networks. Um, one of them is, you know, today is used by OpenStack and similar solutions where the virtual network is basically a set of um, end stations um, mutually interconnected with inherent L2, L3 connectivity, but there is no topology in that network. There's no, and uh, there's also no means of programming that network beyond just indicating, beyond just constructing the network and giving it some policies for, um, uh, for how it should be connected to the outside. Uh, to other virtual networks or to internet. Um, and so there almost already actually has a one or two applications uh, called virtual tenant networks. I thought, now there's a comment that there were multiple, but I thought that the multiple VTN networks I looked in the source code. Consolidated. Yeah. And the core VTN folder still there? But okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's but, still Sony VTN and Huawei VTN. And there's also a core VTN, which is now outside. Which is now outside of the owner's source tree. Okay. But yeah, there are a, a couple of different approaches and a couple of different of the Neutron APIs that we've implemented. Yeah. But those are all of those are based on this yeah, sort of like, like, yeah. basically just a connectivity cloud with yeah. no ability to program in between. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, uh, so to provide a complementary solution, which is inspired by what Open Vertex uh, did or is doing, um, and the idea here is to provide a almost like a complementary solution where you, where a customer or tenant can create a, a virtual network that has a structure, a topology, uh, but has no inherent connectivity, and this connectivity can, can be controlled by the tenant applications. To, uh, to do whatever they need to do. Basically to be able to produce SDN networks. Um, so that, that's, the, that's the general idea here, um, so sort of to provide complementary solution to the OpenStack style virtual networks. Now, to support that uh, type of use case, uh, so, so, so sort of basic concepts was developed where that essentially kind of sets up the high-level policies for, for the high-level structure of the model. So we have a notion of a tenant. Um, however, in order not to get embroiled in, 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 in the tenant management and also to potentially get into a realm where we would conflict with uh, higher-level orchestrators about what tenants mean and what they are, uh, we represent the tenant using a very shallow concept, using just a tenant ID. And that tenant ID can is actually externally provided, so it can be used as a foreign key to tie it to notions of tenants with other external systems. 
Um, but but tied to the tenant ID can then be uh, the, the set of virtual networks. And so the, essentially virtual networks are created on behalf of a tenant and are always tied to a tenant. Um, now, clearly in order for the virtual networks to have a structure, they have, one can create virtual devices and virtual links within that uh, network. Um, the virtual devices themselves um, can have ports which are then bound to and I think this is the key part here. The virtual ports themselves are realized by the physical ports in the under, underlying network. Um, and so this is how the binding between the virtual and physical occurs. It's through, solely through the relationship of the virtual port to the physical port. Links themselves, the virtual links themselves, are just like uh, ordinary links in the uh, rest of ONOS, in the sense that they're just a pair, a directed pair of two connect points, meaning a device ID, in this case virtual device ID, and a port number, in this case virtual port number. So is the port mapping many to one? I'm sorry? Uh, is the port mapping, virtual port to physical port mapping, many to one? With yes, so there can be multiple virtual ports uh, that are realized by the uh, same physical port. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yes. Now, there are some caveats to this. Um, uh, the interior ports uh, can be shared they ex uh, clearly, um, but they have to be clearly tunneled through correctly. Um, exterior ports, on the other hand, which is the edge ports, uh, require, in order to be able to, if we wanted to be able to associate the same physical port with multiple virtual networks, the traffic that has to come in on those has to be somehow identified or tagged, right? Yeah, so, so, so the, the idea is not to, the idea is to associate uh, a NIC to a virtual network, irrespective of where that NIC is, right? So, so if you have a physical port mm -hmm. that mm. is, as far as you're concerned, from your topology, an edge port, um, it can have multiple NICs kind of, because there could be some switch, yes. something, yes, yes, yes. Something, something on the outside, something, yes. something, something yeah. that you're not concerned about, exactly, yes. And and so at that point, you would map the the, the NIC into a virtual network, and the, the discriminant there would be would be a I mean, naively would be a megabit, so could okay. be a megabit, right? Yes. Um, okay. So what you're saying is that inherently, what matters is the end hosts and not the edge yes. ports. Yes. The edge port is irrelevant because the edge port is just an entry point to your world. Right? What matters is, is is who you want to stick in which virtual network. That's what that, that's the concept that you want, right? Because if I have multiple things dangling behind it, um, I, I don't necessarily want to say anything coming into that port is in that virtual network and that's it. You know, your world is over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to put. You want to. You want to you wanna have a discriminant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you start. You can start. And now you can start doing a different thing, but you can, you, you, this can be, an, um, um, it can be another uh, dimension to, to your slicing approach, because you're going to virtualize your network and then you're going to slice it usually. You're not going to slice first and then virtualize. You're going to virtualize then slice. So you can always slice at the entrance of your network. If you want to slice on different parameters, right? If I want to slice uh, uh, different types of header space, right? Not the MAC address, but I don't know IPs or I'm um, just saying things. But, so, so I think what we probably what I probably need to do is to make a comment here. Um, so what I'm hearing is that there is sort of a a universal discriminant. In this case, it may be like the L2 address um, that would enable any device to plug into the physical network at any point and sort of be reengaged with the virtual network. But the, 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 might you also want like uh, cases where potentially you don't necessarily have a discriminant, like that's universal. Like for example, um, if this is like a transit network and you have like a transit router or a transit device or I don't know, a router I guess would be tagged with the router's MAC. But if you had sort of a, a stream of traffic entering through a port, might you want to say that you know I I want really the location here is what's important. Like the fact that it's coming into the network on this port. 
Yeah, so the, the, that's what we're doing, right? In the, in the sense of like, we've decoupled the physical part, the physical edge part, mm -hmm. from whatever is connected to it, mm -hmm. right? And whatever traffic is coming into it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then that aids as well in, um, in, in, the, in um, moving whatever is talking through that port. Mm -hmm. If you end up moving, that device moves. Mm -hmm. right? If it's a wireless device and it moves, mm -hmm. right? it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, what I'm looking for. It's belonging, uh, words. Association. It's association to a particular virtual network, network, network is yeah. maintained naturally, right? Because yes. you don't have to move. The definition of the definition of the virtual network stays the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm not sure. It's the, the the edge board is uh, the edge board is the edge board. edge board. I don't care. It's only what's going in that matters. So but the the concept the, the thing you try, I think I think when you're talking about virtual networks, especially the ones we're thinking of building, mm -hmm. you have to think of them as devoid of any semantics. Right, the virtual network itself, until a an app or yeah, yeah no, a third party I, controller. I, I, I agree comes, with that. They have no. They have yeah. no. They they're like a portal network. They do nothing. Yeah, I, I guess the, the question that I had is, um, is there value in providing physical to virtual port bindings? Um, and the reason I ask is because perhaps you have um, like a transit network where you're going to be carrying um, sort of a a fire hose of traffic that may come from a plethora of devices that you actually do want to be handled by a virtual network. Mm -hmm. so you're saying you're saying that that particular edge board, any traffic coming into it, is going to be part of the particular virtual network. Well, yeah, I guess I was sort of asking whether that that's a useful construct. I mean, but but you could still you, you could still implement it. You could still implement it with the same notion, right? It might be it might be in the definition of your virtual network a little more cumbersome because mm -hmm. you have to like you know say like all these MAC addresses or whatever. Mm -hmm. Part of the virtual network, um, and you can think of synthetic sugar to make it nicer, to make it easier. But uh, but but uh, it, that might be a useful concept. When we were when we were building OVX, our initial implementation mm -hmm. at the time was to just slap in the edge ports into a virtual network, right? And 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 it, it constrained us unnecessarily. Right? I see. It made it made things very complicated, especially when things were moving around, right? because then you have to. Usually, you think the configuration of a virtual network is an external thing. It's an operator that comes along and actually types it in, uh -huh. right? And says, "I'm going to create this virtual network," yes, yeah. or some instantiation of an operator. But what happened is, is when things started moving around, the system itself had to reconfigure itself, right? and that was like a source of like, like, mind, not really. Uh, that would that would that would uh, that would that would, uh, that would cause a lot of complexity unnecessarily. Okay, but okay. So quick question on clarification, I guess here is so current. So this is at least with respect to the ports themselves. The, the, so the device ports. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the same limitation today in a sense that uh, that it's ex the the binding between the virtual and physical is explicitly given as part of defining the network. Now, that's just on the ports, though. However, it's not necessarily um, for, for the, yeah, the, the infrastructure devices yeah. Yeah. and infrastructure links. Now, the thing is, the ports in general, whether they're edge or, or not. Now, I guess in some cases, uh, when it comes to the in-station host, which is what we were just talking about, um, I guess the limitation there exists as well because right now we would expect that the virtual host, even though it may there may be many hosts that come in to that they're connected to that underlying physical port which is realizing the edge port, um, there may be a whole piece of infrastructure, right? So there may be multitudes of end stations there. However, we would still expect the host. So if the host change location and it would come in as long as there is ability for that host to come in to that device it would have to come in on one of its ports one of its one of its virtual ports is that too limiting so i guess i, I, guess I need a diagram here uh, yeah i'm not quite sure what you're trying to get there okay so let's say that i've that I have two ports on a physical device, right? One leading to somewhere else, uh -huh. and then one one uh, which is expected to have an end station connected uh -huh. to it. 
And now something, um, but there could be a piece of infrastructure behind that. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Or that's invisible to us that sure, we're not sure, concerned sure. with. Sure. But let's say something happens with that physical infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that causes that host to now come in on some other port mm -hmm. of the underlying device. Mm -hmm. And then underlying that that underlying port is not mapped to any physical virtual port that the network knows about. Uh, that's the thing is that like like uh, is that that's still a limitation, right? Uh, it's uh, I'm not sure if it's a limitation. Your your mapping function is still the same. Your traffic is entering your network, right? Uh, unless you've explicitly denied that, uh, your mapping function says I have traffic coming into here. This traffic is coming with a certain identifier. Does does this identifier map? Is this identifier part of a virtual network? If so, which one? You see what I'm saying? Right. Yes. So this may, okay. Yes, but I think I think what you're assuming in here, and this is maybe a, a maybe a um, restriction we may need to lift from the current design, is that the host comes in on. It doesn't have to be specific port, the virtual port. But it has to come in on one of the virtual ports that's currently defined for the network. If it comes on something, let's say we have the device, physical device has yeah. ports A, B, C, yeah. but only A and C are the are yeah. a part yeah. of the network. If yeah. it comes on B right now, we're just gonna know what the you hell. Just is. drop the traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you yeah. should because it's oh, we should. That's a question of security. Right. That's a question of security. It's a no okay. It's a no so in that case, in that case, we're good. Yeah. In that case, yeah. because we, we basically assume that the the that the, the traffic that a virtual network conveys mm -hmm. must pass through the virtual devices. Otherwise, I think yeah. we, we create shortcuts in a virtual topology and that we don't want that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you can end up with a host connected in the middle of your network just magically and you don't want that. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to put some, put it to do in here and uh, I'll come up uh, together with you, Brian, uh, Brian Stanky. We can come up with some sort of, uh, uh, diagrams showing sort of the examples of mappings and uh, between virtual and logical, and hopefully explain some of or facilitate some of the discussions. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So, did that answer your question, Madam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. <laughs> Not more than what you wanted. Unwind the stack here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so uh, one of the other keys is clearly, and this, and this is just stated explicitly, but it should hopefully be fairly obvious anyway, is that the virtual devices and links themselves are elastic in a sense that that if there is a change in the underlying topology, provided that the the that the connectivity between the physical devices which realize the virtual network is, is maintained in some form or fashion, then the connectivity of the virtual network remains um, remains uh, uninterrupted so to speak, or unaffected. Now, one of the questions is in development of this document was whether or not, uh, for example, available resource availability affects connectivity as well. And in, in this, my view, the answer is yes, uh, because if you had, let's say, network is fine, status quo, you have connectivity fine with resource reservations being provisioned as part of the um, programming of the network and operation of the network. And um, then if something changes in the underlying network, and the remaining connectivity, for example, doesn't have sufficient resources, let's say sufficient bandwidth to be able to maintain the level of connectivity assumed by the virtual network, then essentially the connectivity uh, at the virtual network level is compromised. Uh, so Thomas, I have uh, just wanted a clarification. So if I have a virtual link between two virtual uh, devices, yeah. um, so clearly, uh, the, that connectivity can be realized through multiple physical paths. Correct. Uh, when one of those gets compromised, yes, um, you like the system will automatically try all the alternatives and exhaust them before it, it basically notifies the virtual network that the link is broken. That's the idea. Yes. Okay. Correct. Uh, and so basically, when you create a virtual network, uh, do you actually end up 
you know cre- making changes to the underlying physical network like say for example you know if, if you are using intent to realize the connectivity uh, does it mean that when you create a virtual network you know things happen on the physical network yes okay so yes but there's also like um, when you're creating your virtual network your virtual link um, you have different modes right like the, the, you know, you you can let the person specify exactly how he wants his virtual things to be created, right? And just say like, uh, just say like, like you know, enumerate the path along which he wants his virtual link to be created, or let the system compute a path for him. And he can also append properties. I want this. I want this. Uh, I want this link to be fail safe. I want this link to be, you know, if if anything happens to this link, then I just want the connectivity to connectivity to go down. So there are properties that can be associated to these things that dictate what is the recovery model for such a for such a virtual link. If I want it to be phase up and if I tolerate uh, if I tolerate uh, um, you know um, reductions in capacity uh, because of, uh, of a certain event. Right? You can accept a lot, there are a lot of variants here that you can you can attack and and I would I would suggest that like we don't pick one, mm-hmm. we leave it open. We, we implement one or two, like a, maybe just to be simple, like a, one mode where we enumerate the entire path, and the other mode where we use the path computation that we have in, in OWASP mm-hmm. to compute paths for us. Right? And leave it at that. Right? And we, but it's just an algorithm that you slap in. Right? You just say, you, know, you can either use this al- these algorithms, mm-hmm. right? or you do it manual. Okay. So that's something that we'll have to add because right now, we basically, it's uh, we we give the control to the virtual network provider, which is something we'll discuss later. Um, so we right now don't allow the specification of the additional attributes. So that's something we can record and uh, potentially add. We just need to make sure the interface and ask yeah. support adding that that yeah. ability in the future. Okay. So did I catch your incorrectly recovery models? And uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. And so, um, okay, so there was also uh, from a prior, one of the prior reviews, um, there was a question, remaining question here, should a virtual port be represented by a group of ports? I think this is motivated by uh, giving us additional flexibility to repair. Uh, basically, if, if something happens to one of the virtual port or virtual port, uh, physical underlying ports, your, your logical port is actually still up because it has a, it has means to um, to egress elsewhere. I didn't record the origin of this um, this um, older question. Is that applicable to all ports or only infrastructure? I think it would be infrastructure ports. Oh, then. Maybe, but it's kind of like in a way it's 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 isn't it kind of. Uh, um, isn't that like a implicit? Uh, because when, say you have a virtual link, right, and say the it has it, it, it's supposed to auto recover, right? Uh, so the link gets cut for some reason, the system will recompute a different path if there is yeah. one. So it's kind of implicit. Put that, that, y- yes, but I think this is yes. So the thing is, if 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 if. Um, if something happens to a link or port somewhere in, in the middle of things, uh, something that's not necessarily directly t- tied to any specific logical virtual port, then yes, it's supposed to all heal, mm-hmm. uh, provided there is alternate continuity. However, if it's that specific, uh, the, the idea here is that, and then this is maybe a limitation of the current approach, is that a logical port, a virtual port, can be is realized currently by only one physical port. Which means so we basically are anchoring the virtual network in a specific space of the of the underlying network. We sort of are embedding it sort of manually, right? We're saying this device, this virtual device comprises of this port of that device, physical device, and this other port of that other device. But we're sort of anchoring in the space of the underlying network right there. So you're talking about let's say a virtual link between two so you have two devices, two physical devices yes. that are internal. Yes, they are connect. They connected by a 
whatever network. Yes. And you create a virtual link between these two, between these two virtual devices. Yes. Right. Um, and the endpoints of the virtual link are anchored to one one physical. Port. Yes, currently one physical port. Yes. Yeah, so means if something happens to the underlying port, your virtual port also goes down, <coughs> and therefore your virtual link is now separate. Yeah. So so yeah, I, I guess it's a, a decision that has to be made because like what are the semantics of your network right your do you want it to behave like a normal network where like if a link goes down right a link goes down right? and a link, goes, a link goes down it's up to the guy who's programming the network to find it yeah so, but i think this has to do with your pr earlier comment with this basically with the ability to specify the mode right so this is basically a way to manually indicate failover Capability yeah, where you have some extra resiliency. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, you could do that. Um, so, but maybe a better. I'm just wondering about the amount of complexity that. that yeah, in. sure, exactly. Well, which is why we're currently we're not dealing with this. Yeah, I think I think it's maybe leave the door open mm -hmm. in the specification, but I wouldn't I wouldn't attack that just yet because to me it seems kind of complicated because you have to pick pick the ports on either end that it's kind of like remapping function. The system remaps onto itself. Uh, it, it, that freaks me out. Uh, I, I agree that the complexity uh, seems high. I think I think after we add uh, some more additional diagrams here, that will probably help sure. clarify some of these discussions a little bit. We have a whole bunch of them on Open Vertex all over. Well, then uh, <laughs> may just go with <laughs> your inventory. <laughs> um, okay. And so, the, the notion here is for the, uh, you know, how, how would one operate on the virtual networks, right? So the idea, because they have topology and they have no connectivity, uh, the idea here is that once they're constructed, then you can obtain service using the virtual network service, and again, it will be an entity that we discuss later. You can obtain essentially services that are existing in ONOS today, or you can obtain the kinds of services that are in ONOS today, such as device service, name service, host service, topology service, path service, and so forth. Not all of them, but a certain set of such services that are properly narrowed to operate only in the context of that virtual network. And then once you have that, in that instance of that service, uh, then you can, uh, an application can essentially operate as it would normally operate on an underlay. It just gets the same kinds of object, gets the same kind of data. They're just devices, their links, their virtual host, their paths, and so forth. Uh, I mean, that's it, it, this is like it's okay, it's fine for me. But like, what what I uh, find concerning about that is is every service that will ever be involved in in virtual networks has to now support that mode. Right? Right. Or at least have to provide something to be able to like uh, um, communicate which virtual network he's talking about, right? And so for me, that like it, it's um, it's a little bit uh, um, it's like uh, there's going to be a lot of like, you know if we, we we've identified a small set of these services, yes. uh, but that set is bound to grow. Right? It, it will because more things will be added to the to. You, want, you will want to be able to do more things to your virtual network than this small set of services. Yes. So, yeah, so the, the thought here is that this would be the sort of the foundational services on which, um, which uh, if there are the same kinds of services that other applications are based on, mm -hmm. then, then rather than just adding things laterally, they would just subsidy stack on top of these services. Sure. But, uh, but, but you're, you're, you're right. You have to reimplement a whole bunch of stuff. Then. Not well, not necessarily. If you just if you if you prime your application, which is currently let's say using intent service, mm -hmm. close to the whole service, and other uh, uh, repertoire of small services, but let's say it's an off-platform application that knows how to use these things, mm -hmm. then um, then that same application can just be given the narrowed instances of those services to you rather than the full-fledged underlying services. It, yeah. I, I go back and forth on this between like making virtualization a, a first class. First class, yeah, we've right. and I talked about yeah, that. Yeah, and like making it making it like all networks are virtual. 
and if there's only one network, then it's the same as the physical. physical. And then, because once you have this kind of like, like, like a dual pronged approach, if you've chosen to go down the route where you only have one physical network and you want to add them later, things get a little more complicated because you enter this world of, con uh, of conflicts. Right? Whereas if you have virtualization as a first class citizen, then I can add virtual networks because the, the remapping, at least the encoding on the data plane, is done anyway from the get go. Right? And then when I add new networks, right, it's just more of the same. Right? And so I have this first class citizen that I can attack and configure at any time of my runtime. So it's kind of like, um, um, kind of like a hypervisor on a, mm -hmm. on, on a machine that's running one operating system or multiple, but I can always add more. If I've chosen to install one operating system on my machine and I don't have a hypervisor, well, I'm kind of stuck with that. Stuck with that. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'll gra uh, gra grapple a little bit with how to go about doing this without the minimum amount of destruction. I, my th yeah. you know, you, no, I this was brought up on a number of different occasions and uh, it's definitely a very valid point. I guess my sort of... No, I agree that like, it's like, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, like, you know, kind of like take on us as lasagna. Right? Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Little lasagna, lasagna yeah. and add some more cheese. Yeah, it's basically uh, like, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's adding a, adding a floor to the house, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, so, so, no, I agree. I agree that's the, that's the, that's the downside, but is that, is that, um, it might be worth kind of like spending like, uh, like a sprint, say, uh, investigating that. And, and seeing like, what is the cost of doing that? Is it is it prohibitive? And it might very well be. And in which case, it's prohibitive. Let's not do that. Yeah. Right. And uh, and uh, or it might be uh, it might be like say, oh, actually, it's really not that bad. It's just a question of like you know, you know, moving a couple of pointers pointers around. Right. <laughs> is there going to be destruction anyway? Like even with the dual point approach, um, you're going to have to change the implementation of like the whole service and. The no, no, no. Okay, so yeah, so this is not something that's maybe not explained. So the the thought here is to leave the existing services as they are on a, on a physical infrastructure program, as they are, to yeah. continue to evolve, but but leave their structure as they are. When you want to operate on a virtual network, in the scope of a virtual network, um, you given that virtual network, you can say, I would like device service or service. And so basically, you uh, you specify up front, and you're going to get an instance of a device service or an instance of host service, main service, path, topology, and f select few services. And this is the limitation is that they're, today, these are finite. Yeah. Uh, and, but you're going to get instances of these things, not the same. So, have, so basically, yeah. you, there's no you specify your your scoping up front, and therefore from that point yeah. onwards, it's yeah. implied yeah. baked into yeah. that thing, and then you only can operate within the confines of the. Thing. So, so you, what you're saying is you have to ask the virtual network service for yes. a host service. Yes, and there's a section down below. There's a virtual service dot get, and you give it a service that virtual network and a class, and, and so we we can maybe discuss that a little bit later. But, uh, or you will have um, you will have like a, a physical like plural service and also a virtual plural service. Is which different implementations? Or yes. So yes. So right. So right now, yeah, we're probably diving into a level of detail that's yeah. covered down below. So let's let's go through some of yeah. these things. Yeah. But let's note. Yeah. Okay. Note your, can I just ask one one kind of maybe, maybe you'll cover it after, but. Uh, no, no, that's not the point. The point is but, to. But, uh, but, but, but what, I, what I'm saying is, wouldn't you have, like, say, I asked a virtual network service for a host service. Right? That host service contains all the tenant information, right? At least, like, like the, the scoping information. Yes, right? exactly. And exactly. But that scoping information will then have to be communicated somehow to the real host service or something that talks to the data plane. No. No, 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 no. So, okay. So, let's let's take a look. Can we we can probably fast forward to the model, uh, maybe, because we're we're touching on a on a sort of a section of the sort of the philosophy here that all that has a specific set of details later in the document. Here. So, if you if you can suspend this a little bit, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna cover it later. 
but besides there's additional discussion to be had about the type of programming that you deal with. So the idea here is you construct the virtual networks and then in order to operate them, you operate on them through the facades of the existing honor services. But yes, as Ali points out, not all of them, just select few. And that's something maybe you should take a note. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, Brian or some, somebody can take a note so I can move on here. Uh, so you interact with the virtual networks in two different ways. You can either construct, manipulate what the virtual networks are, you can create, edit them, remove them, and that's done through virtual network administration service. Mm -hmm. We have a UML diagram down below which shows exactly what you can do. And this is also where you express the, you know, you add virtual ports to virtual devices, and this is where the binding is done. So manipulations are done through virtual network admin service. And this includes ability to register and unregister tenants as supporting keys. Uh, then normal operation, normal sort of queries uh, and traversal of things as virtual things, explicitly as virtual things, you do through virtual network service. So through virtual network service, you can list the tenants, you can get a list of virtual networks, you can get a list of virtual devices, virtual links, and virtual hosts by those networks. And you can get a list of virtual ports for a virtual device. Now here, you're dealing explicitly with things that are virtual. But through this service, the virtual network service, you can also say get a device service, let's say, for this virtual network. And now you can enumerate and ask questions about devices, but they're just devices. At this point in time, they're devices. Now you could probably pass them to device to, to virtual devices, but really what you're gonna get them as are gonna be just devices, and just links, and just paths, and just ports. Because, as you'll see from the UML diagram down below, the virtual elements are all really descendants of the of their counterparts in terms of object hierarchy and interface hierarchy. They're descendants from their under from the descendants in the under and the core model. And so. Um, so this is on the sort of on a on the, on the, on the front side of the uh, of the subsystem, on the back side of the subsystem, and maybe this is where I should move so to a diagram. So so one one question. So so say your your link service, mm -hmm. your virtual link service, mm -hmm. gives you a virtual link, mm -hmm. and you can talk about that link. Yes. Say you want to you do something with that link. That virtual link service has to maintain the mapping for that particular tenant to the to the set of physical links that make up the virtual link. Yes. So so and yes. So the thing is, what we should probably do is look at the diagram. Look at the yeah. diagram. So the, the idea here is rough, rough, rough general idea here is to set provide a clear separation between the, the part of the system that just keeps track of the, the mappings, or, or so the high-level prescription of what the virtual network should be. Mm -hmm. And that's the virtual network manager, and, and its store, and the and a, a virtual network admin services, and virtual network service. Basically, it's the front of the subsystem that allows applications to manipulate, define their own virtual network, and then to program them and use them. Right, okay. the, 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 but this is it has nothing to do with actually touching the network. No, no, I understand. I, I understand. But what, 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 what I, there's a, a little piece that I don't understand, which is, so you have your virtual X service, mm -hmm. right? That maintains the mapping from the virtual world to the physical world. Yes, right? and then in slight terms as right. possible. So, so yes. X, let me let me try. And, let me try. Uh, uh, so, you have your virtual network service, right? And then you you have you know multiple tenants, right? and to each of those, you give them uh, a virtual device service, virtual device service, virtual device service. Right? Actually, I give them a device service. Uh, Just yeah, device yeah, yeah. You give them a device service, but from 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 yes. the from yes. the board is easier to explain as a virtual. Yes. Each one of these virtual device services. Right, has a different mapping function. Must no. do, right? Yes, yes, correctly. Yes, yes, yes. So how do you 
when I asked for a, for a device service from virtual network service, how do you prime, how do you feed that information into the implementation of the virtual or device service that's actually the virtual Yes. Yeah. So I guess that's an implementation detail, but I don't see how that can be. Yes. Yeah, so 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 in fact, the virtual network manager has all the mappings for all the network. Yes, it does. But yes, and so what, basically, what it does when when you ask for device service, you you gonna get a small sort of a pro, sort of a, almost like a proxy uh, that that will uh, then uh, delegate all of the requests for information to the virtual network manager or some internal components of the virtual network manager, which is access to all of the mappings. Okay. So, so that's you, how the mappings are provided. So we don't actually clone all of the mappings, uh, but we, we provide access to the global mapping. So the, those virtual device, so virtual the virtual X services are essentially facades to the distributed virtual network store. Essentially, they're the outgrowths of the virtual network manager. Yes. The distributed virtual network store is, is storing virtual devices and virtual links. And you said, yes. you said it stores the mapping in a library way. Right. Yes, uh, and the mapping is only only through the port. Right, but but now you're saying it has the like the virtual devices; those objects are in that store. Right. So yes, okay. correct. Yeah, I think I mean yes, they are. It's it, it's it's you know it's very similar to um, you know you you you're, you're trying to isolate all the. The, the mapping uh, yes. uh, into one spot, which is yes. obviously what we can do, uh, which is the same way we did in OBX. The mapping function was just like we had we had like a couple classes, and like or at least like a, a region. Yes, exactly. Like, just like <laughs> handling all of that, which is the same. Um, I, I just uh, it, it, I, th I think that that'll work. I'm just concerned again. I come back to my previous comment about like the first class citizen versus, versus yes, versus. yes. And so, I, I don't, I don't know. so so my, my thought, I guess, that and to, to touch on that point again because I kind of think I've derailed, I've derailed myself off of that point earlier. Was my thinking is that what we should try is to try it as a separate subsystem to work out some of the kinks. And at that point in time, when we know, uh, so subdivide the problem, right? Understand the understand it and deal with it like this, in, even in the light of limitations that it, of a separate subsystem around the first class citizen. But once we've learned more about it and sort of things have stabilized, then we're going to probably be in a better position where we can then do the investigation that you suggested. Now, what would it take to take this stuff and sort of provide an isomorphic mapping in lieu of the existing? A subsystem, right? Basically, and then and that would be kind of like the DOM zero, uh, as you have in OBX, and then uh, forklift the rest of the system on top of this. Yeah, I, yeah, maybe. Uh, I would rather do the investigation first, first, because simply because usually what happens, and I'm not saying this is like a like, 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 a, like the, the the intended uh, thing is that usually when like an implementation exists. Uh, it's usually the one that sticks, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that like that. Like, like I'm just, you know, that's true in, in, in all systems. Like that's, that's, I mean, that's true. Well, yeah. sure. It's it's harder to it's but harder to rewind back to a certain. There's state. also a time pressure though, and the problem is, yeah, the problem problem is I'm afraid that the forklift sort of this sort of lift up having a floor to the house uh, would be a potentially disruptive to to other parts of the system. And then my put my also I think would clearly be more expensive than just providing. An no, I mean it's it's, 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 it's very it's very well possible and 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 and, and you know I think I, I, in my opinion the, the the delivery of a virtual network system in Onos or virtual networking in Onos um, you know it's it's such a it's you know, it's such a big feature. Virtual networking is such a it big feature of SDN, right? If we don't do it correctly from the get go, uh, no matter like I'm not saying it should take two years, nor should it take a month, right? Um, uh, we have to be careful to deliver something that, that that will satisfy people's demands, so that like. People don't start saying like on us is virtual networking sucks and we have to use something else for virtual networking. We don't want to get that state. Right? Um, and that's 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 kind of 
you have to be a little careful about that. But, um, but on the other hand, yeah, it, it, we have to be careful about um, any intermediate solution sticking. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think, yeah. Are, 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 isn't the virtual networking subsystem supposed to be delivered by the end of the year? Can I ask a question for you? <laughs> we don't always worry about that. Today. Um, so in a use case like an Equinix, that would have uh, maybe multiple physical networks um, for different providers. And then uh, each provider being able to provide virtual networks to um, smaller uh, providers, right? And maybe small providers being able to provide. So is that, um, is that, a, is that kind of ownership and ability to uh, recurse mm -hmm. um, thought of in, in this? Yeah, so that, that's one of the reasons why a virtual network is, and a virtual device is a device, and therefore can act as a but, but banking you, for others. Right? You can. So, so the way we've done this right now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would, I would say that like it's harder to recurse because it's expected. I mean, okay, you, you could say that like the users of a virtual network can be off platform, right? So like an an app, but then you you you've break, broken the model in some way, right? Because because I go from um, physical switches, physical <laughs> devices that speak open flow for all intents and purposes, right? To ONOS. ONOS creates a virtual network that then can be programmed by uh, flow objectives and intents, right? And then that can be hit via REST API, right? Um, can be hit via REST API. That app that speaks REST API, right, cannot be ONOS again. Right? Well, it could be, but then you have to have a REST it's provider for that, right? So you, you, you've broken the symmetry of the system when you go from, from south to north, right? If you if you went from OpenFlow, ONOS, OpenFlow, ONOS, then you could just, it, it would just be a natural yeah, version. Yes, so the idea is to get to that point. So so the, 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 current, the current area of work, and, and to answer the question, your question, Bill, that's the goal, is to be able to allow that. But yes, with, there are some limitations that are not inherent to the approach, but they're just limitations in scope of the effort. Um, is to, um, and then, and this is, has to do with the on versions of platform applications, because the current OSGI, I mean, the, the, the current symmetric structure of the system, where an application is installed across the entire cluster, uh, does not really, and, and because of uh, a limited mechanism to isolate consumption of resources such as CPU and memory and, and, and disk and all that stuff, it really, the ONOS system does not lend itself to host tenant specific applications, which means, uh, you know, we cannot have uh, thousands of tenants, each one of them running, you know, uh, let's say tens of applications on a, on a cluster. That's not what it was designed for. So, so you can't do that. You're basically saying that you can't run reactive forwarding uh, on behalf of Coke and Pepsi. No, yes. we can't. Right now, we can run a tenant aware application, which is an application, a single instance of an application that can be aware of tenants and can do different things on behalf of those tenants. And there's a section on this yeah. um, uh, in in document. That, that's that's so, a, that's a shame so, that OSGI does that. Well, yeah, so but, so but is, this is where microservices would come in, in, in and AWS, GRTC. Right? Right. So in AWS, right, like you can you can go to AWS and you can ask them for like VMs, mm -hmm. low level physical virtual networks, or you can ask them for a database, or you can ask them for you know services that are, that are going to be run on your behalf that you'll have a service interface to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is sort of the same same goal in XOS, and um, or you can say I'm going to take my resources at the, lo the the level that I need and go off and do what I want with them. Mm -hmm. And so from our perspective, we can have these platform supported services like reactive forwarding if you want. It's just not going to be the Coke specific reactive forwarding or the Pepsi specific reactive forwarding. If they want those, they're going to need to build those apps, run them on platform, and then hopefully provide a high performance uh, exactly. RPC exactly. mechanism and by which yes. they can interact. Yeah. The goal is to go yeah. with the open flow, the, the, uh, eventually. The, but anyway, yeah. you are going to make fun. I'm trapped. Sorry, go ahead. No, I agree. I mean, like, 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 you know, in a way, it's like, it's like if you so I could run 
create a virtual network like this, mm -hmm. right? And stick on top of it our forwarding application, right? Yes. As long as no one else has done it in the system, right? No other user of ONOS, correct? That particular instance, correct? Is doing it. Yes. Right. Um, so that, that's the limitation, right? And if we're okay with that, we're okay with that. What I, what I, what I, what I find um, uh, what, 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 what makes me a little sad is when I think of like the, the, the you know, I'm interested in creating virtual networks, right? And I'm interested in sticking. Uh, I, I just want to run traffic through them, right? As an experiment, like, like mm -hmm. I just want to create my virtual networks, and I want to run traffic through them. Right? Um, now I'm kind of stuck, right? Because if I create five virtual networks, only one of them can do the stock can run the stock at the computer as well. I can test my yeah, virtual network. Yeah, so right. but that's specifically one of the things that was not designed for. No, I understand. All, we I didn't understand. have the we didn't have the means to isolate or scale. Uh, so that solution, and so, so for that particular reason, so there's actually a number of reasons why we, for now, for the current time being, the sole form of programming these networks is using intents, high-level, high-level constructs. However, the idea here is that after we've established that, then we should be able to also provide means to program these networks using flow objectives. And once we've done that, then we can actually expose a prototypical pipeline on, on virtual devices and they provide essentially an agent that uses the flow objective based programming to to expose an open flow agent for these virtual networks. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then you can run your apps elsewhere that can be open flow based and it can be actually ONOS based. You can run these little micro onoses that can actually run reactive forwarding on a given virtual network using Using its own set of, you know, virtual network drivers, right? So that was that sort of the long-term goal, and, and but I think in order to be able to run the tenant-specific apps with proper level of isolation and uh, um, and flexibility and scalability in terms of uh, different tenants can run different combinations of applications on different networks. For that, we have to have gRPC. Uh, I mean, and or support for open flow. I think, uh, I mean, I understand why you want to use high level constructs initially, but like if our goal, if our goal is to create virtual networks which are virtual SDN networks, then we should bake into the virtual device uh, the concept of a virtual, of, a, of, a, of an SDN element. Right, so that's a flow table. That's a and whatever that flow table looks like, right? It could be for now. It could be just a a one table match action table. that just is, is just looks like a normal table because then it maps onto all our other services, all, all our other like the flow service to the flow objective service. It maps onto these things naturally, right? It's it's just another device, right? Um, and not tied to any higher level semantics because once you go to the, in my opinion, if you go to the higher level semantics first. And trying to break that down eventually into lower level contracts, it's harder. So, and you'll 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 inevitably um, uh, decompose it in two big chunks. Right? Whereas we already have an example of how to build virtual, uh, how to build SDN elements, and we should adopt the same model. If we if our goal is is ultimately to have an open flow northbound, then we should go with that. So, okay, so, no, yes. well, so the, the, the thing is this, okay, uh, so, I mean, we, we can certainly change it, but, but we can, let's talk about this. So, even with the higher semantics, we're still having a lot of discussions around this area, right here, mm -hmm. because the, it's sort of the initial naive tunnel-based interface that we provided, um, I, I don't think is expressive enough. And I mean, that, and that probably uh, goes to your point that, you know, once, once we set all high level semantics, then we will have, then we are sort of at least stuck with a certain level capabilities in this, this, this boundary. The, the role, the, the, you know, I mentioned that general, general idea is to provide a complete separation between the front of, of how things are, networks are constructed and tracked, and, and then give us a degree of freedom to be able to realize those networks in certain ways. But that is predicated on having a good boundary. Now, across this boundary, we wanted to be able to just convey the structure of the network and and uh, and and the program. 
And so that's still being developed. Now, if you think, I mean, that, then we should support a lower level abstractions, then we can certainly increase, add that to the scope, and we can, we can because we, we have intense and flow objectives, and we scratch flow objectives for the time being just to narrow things down. But we can put them back in. The, the goal is to put them in long term. I would, I mean, but, but, but I don't think that this should be open flow. No, 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 Here, no, 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 right? no, not, not okay. at that level, but what I'm suggesting is, is uh, the, the, the programming model should be, because intents now speak yes. flow objectives. Yes. Right? right. So if, if the programming model of a virtual network is flow objectives, yes. then it will be intents as well, by, by, by transition. Sure. Okay. So right. sure. Transitive, okay. transitivity. But I like that. I like. I love. This is my favorite. My favorite construct. Ever. <laughs> transitivity is the best shit in the world. It's extremely powerful. <laughs> so 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 uh, so 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 I would just go with low objectives, right? because then okay. because then all the other constructs that we have. I mean, but but do you okay? So all right. So do you would you agree that if we were to support on this boundary, basically programming via flow objectives, on top of that you could build a um, on top of that you could build an open flow agent. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I could yeah sure because I mean flow objectives describe a pipeline, right? And they describe the as, as far as I, I'd like it to be branded as the owner pipeline. But it would have to be some sort of a normalized pipeline, yeah, right? In order to provide, uh, because you have, you would have to. Yeah, the flow objectives are a pipeline. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the way I look at flow objectives, they're, they they are a pipeline, and it's just that like for anything programming to flow objectives, they just happen to be using the ONOS pipeline, and the ONOS pipeline is very simple. It has four tables. Okay, so so the current approach that um, that Brian Sankey, uh, you still online, Brian, right? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, so the current approach that I'm pursuing is to to figure out what interfaces are necessary as a, a, from the virtual network provider downwards, uh, and also from virtual network provider service upwards to be able to uh, convey the necessary information between the front and the back side of this. Uh, and also to, and, and the reason we want to separate it is because we want to be able to allow have different backends. So currently, the proof of concept work is happening using an intent-based virtual network provider. But the, the idea is, for example, while we expressed uh, interest in be able to use other tunneling type technologies to do this. And so it was for these reasons that we decided to, at least for the time being, to stick with the uh, intent level program. Okay, yeah. so that's something. So you would you would suggest that we sort of I would pause this. I don't, I don't know if you want to pause it. Maybe no, 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 not pause it, but but at least sort of to to reconsider the scope. Yeah, or or I mean, we could use this as a as a as a, as a exploration and see what the what the end result is. Why not? Okay, no, it doesn't hurt anybody. If it depends how much work has already gone into it. If, if it's significant work has gone into it, then, then let's continue and see what what what, what happens, and then we learn. Right? Well, no. I mean, th this is and this is this is this is the part that's still mutating significantly. That part of the system that's highlighted. Um. Okay. So I know we're running a little bit on time. I scheduled a meeting originally for an hour and a half, but I had to shrink it because I was going to try to lose the room, which we may still lose the room. But I think if you guys don't mind, we can probably go at least for ten more minutes. And the room is the court scrum. What? The room is the court scrum. Well, we don't usually use the room, and I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> but we said we said 11:30. We just said 11:30 too. Yeah. We just moved to 11:30, so I'm okay. So, so this is the this is the high level picture, um, and and so we still talked about you know so the on platform applications of so our platform applications we indirectly covered that. Yes. Yeah, so yes, this is definitely a point of asymmetry. The, the idea is to provide the symmetry uh, using essentially off-platform applications. Uh, in the near term, it would be they would be using uh, intents and now uh, potentially offload objectives. And then uh, long term would be to on top of this would be to provide open flow based agents for these networks. Um, it would really just be an, a an agent, but it would look like multiple. Uh, so the, the model of hierarchy, I mean, I understand this may be hard to see, you can probably pump it up a little bit. Uh, 
idea is that the virtual devices, which are virtual elements, which are right here in this corner, uh, such as virtual link, virtual device, and virtual host, <coughs> all uh, are, are virtual elements and therefore are affiliated with the virtual network and um, and tenant. But um, but but in principle, they extend the the abstractions from the from the core on us model. Um, as, as interfaces, that they outright extend them as interfaces. Now the implementations also, like the default virtual host and default virtual link, they actually in, in, also extend the, the default implementations in the core model as well. So there's a, there's a nice fitting all of these entities to minimize the amount of code. But what's different about the virtual device? What different methods do you have on that? It, it's to track the virtual belonging, belonging to belonging to the virtual network. But also, like it's it's good to have um, that little um, layer of indirection because I don't know if you remember in OBS we, we we were able to we could we could basically pause entire virtual networks yeah. and stop them from from executing. Yeah. And like the moment we stopped them, and it was very like a kind of rustic approach, but we could have done it much better given the time. But, but we could snapshot that network and save its state, right? Remember, we couldn't. We, we used to do things where where um, we would snapshot entire networks, or copy the state of an entire network, and then demolish that network, and then rebuild another one on in a different environment, and reload that state. Right? And that state would say, would look at the network and say, okay, I have everything I need. I can ignite this virtual network, and this ignite this virtual network will be reignited with the same networking, the same state as it was left as before. But you need that layer of direction to be able to uh, have uh, the state of the virtual element where you can say pause, stop, destroy, you know, whatever whatever states you can think of. So these um, uh, the, the the virtual elements is also important to note that they're not stored together in the inventory of the physical. They're stored in a, in a single inventory of all of the virtual stuff, as we discussed, in a virtual store, um, and then they're filtered from there by the network. So the, the the you know on the detail level the, the the type of operations that you can do in terms of to interact with the inventory of the virtual things is, is specified in the virtual network service and admin service and again the admin service primarily used to um, create edit um, and remove these things and the virtual network service is used to just to query for the most part. And uh, so right now, the, the, the notion of uh, virtual gateways has not been established at all. That's not something that we gave any thought to. Um, clearly, it's going to have to be. Uh, there's multiple different ways in which we can connect two virtual networks together and or connect a virtual network to the internet. But we haven't settled on a specific method. I know that OVX used the DOM0, right, to tunnel things through. Yeah. and. Um, and so we'll have to. So that's that's one possibility. And another possibility is to actually set up notion of virtual gateways and and uh, specify which virtual networks they could be connecting and, and which uh, ones which virtual network should have access to internet. Now the because the REST API and CLI uh, are dependent really entirely uh, as usual on on the services on the publicly available services. Um, Claudine uh, from Siena was able to um, build REST APIs and CLIs for essentially interacting with both of the admin and virtual network service. So, but this is just with the inventory and mappings and not, uh, not yet the programming part. And so the ability, so the initial implementation of the virtual network system actually did preemptive programming. So as you as you construct a virtual network, the connectivity will be provided. But yeah, you know, that was that was just the first first pass. Now it's entirely the connectivity, which is operations on the underlying network, are now only done as a result of programming the, the virtual network. But I think we may need to, you know, like to to Ali's point, we may need to actually move some of the um, at least resource reservations. Um, up a little bit upfront to, for example, when you specify virtual link with certain failover criteria, right? We need to make sure that 
there's some resources put in place to to make sure the link remains viable. And so, um, like I said, the open flow programming is not there today. Um, the idea is to add it. Virtual networks are not there yet. Um, uh, clearly, a REST API authorization needs to be added in order to actually be able to deploy and have uh, off-platform applications interact with the uh, uh, with uh, with with this because currently any tenant can access once you have once you have access to the REST API you can do anything and that's not clearly okay long term. Um, so that's just in a high level um, narrative and some of the designs and this sort of rationale for for this. So Brian, um, we should probably schedule some time to talk about what it would involve to add support for flow directive based programming, based programming. And we may still stage it, uh, you know, but we should have an upfront discussion about what effect that will have on the virtual network uh, provider service and virtual network provider. Sounds good. I think it's a good point right now to talk about, or I guess in the next, uh, I guess next few days, or even uh, early next week, since I'm just at the point of finishing up the, uh, I guess the uh, the topology provider to listen to the uh, topology events. So that'll be a good point because I was going to move on to back to the virtual network intent service. So it probably is a good time to uh, to. I guess stop that in and look at uh, flow objectives. Okay, and I'll I'll, um, I'll ask Ali where to get the diagrams for the virtual physical mappings, examples of various scenarios, um, and uh, you and I can probably um, help elaborate on those and to make sure that this document has, has some of those the rules. I think we'll simplify talking about these things in the future. Yeah, sounds good. I'll set something up with you when I once I get this uh, latest code. Well, I've got some code out right now for code inspection. And once I get the the next bunch out, then we'll sit down and talk. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you. And feel free to um, to add on correct content in this paper. It's still a clearly a very much living document. So. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So I think. Uh, for the time being, at least, this is kind of an opening salvo again. You know, there's clearly more discussions to be had, yeah. so we can come back to this as more details emerge. But at least, I'm sure it's for comment. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to. Uh, hi, Tom, Thomas. This is Iowa. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. I just have a quick question to you. Uh, so, for this virtual network subsystem, the virtual network you're talking about, is it? Uh, uh, is it mainly like layer to layer three virtual network services, or uh, it's it could potentially cover uh, other areas like uh, transport network? It's an SD, it's an SDN network. Okay, so you're saying it's generic and can uh, represent like virtual network for uh, both uh, layer to layer three connectionless and connected connection oriented networks. Yeah, we were not at least we were not concerned with simulating or virtualizing, you know, optical or wireless characteristics of uh, 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 of specific media. Uh, so, it's, yeah, I guess it would it would be L two yep. networks, I guess SDN networks. But but again, L okay, yeah, because the the support for virtual networks, just like we uh, what we refer to as. Uh, uh, as abstract network, right? That requires uh, for for optical and, and transport network, it requires additional machineries uh, like path computation uh, and traffic engineering uh, extensions to support. So I was I was not sure whether this 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 uh, uh, virtual network is uh, covering that portion at the beginning. No, our, 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 we were not concerned with those uh, with, with with those layers with those aspects. Got it. Okay, thanks. Okay.
You were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say is I'd like us to solicit additional feedback from the community, so I'd like to uh, advertise this mm -hmm. video link, advertise this document. Um, specifically, I'd like to get from R chord and E chord and M chord um, how they think that they would use it in a use case. Or if it's even, well, you, I mean, you're doing the road, road maps, right, for uh, for Friday, and where in the road, those road maps would the need appear? And how can we kind of stage uh, those in, in some some meaningful way? I mean, I mean for us, it's pretty simple. We, we built, um, we built core VTM simply because we didn't have virtual networking in place. Yep. Right? So it's pretty simple. It's a drop in for virtual networking. Because the model of uh, XOS, I mean, this is not really our core, this is core. It's the platform. Right? The model for, for XOS's uh, service composition is based on OBX. Right? The idea at the time, when it was open cloud, was to, was to compose virtual networks and connect them together. That was the idea, and so the, the whole idea behind uh, behind uh, behind the access is the expectation of the network is creating virtual networks which contain services which are then connected to another virtual world in a scalable fashion. Right. So, that, so that's kind of one use case in my mind is is how do you get the same functionality as VTM? Right. Another one would be how do you run um, R core and D core together in the same infrastructure? Right. Another one might be around mobile. Um, how do you how do you provide uh, you know, the the MVNO model um, for a couple of uh, mobile service operators, right? And show a demonstration. Right. So that's what I'm after. It's how could we kind of stage a set of functionality that would let us show some uh, use cases that are specific in those different domains, you know, that are enabled by doing this virtualization. Okay. What was your first example, though? Before the running our our board and the board together, how to get the same uh, VTM? Same oh, same oh, functionality okay. as VTM, yeah. Feel free, because especially we have a pretty good big switch app which provides big switch view to the higher layer. We probably should be using, utilizing virtual network to compose a big switch view and utilize that to show it up or something. Yeah, sure. No, because because for me that's a different use case. Right? Because you're using you're, you're exposing. Uh, well, you could use the same semantics or the same solution. It's kind of like topology summarization. Right? Okay, uh, you know how you have to expose it, but like you're you're summarizing the topology and exposing it to somebody else. It's not the same thing as creating a virtual network. Right? You, 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 you still want to be able for the high level entity to be able to program it, but don't let them have the controls of yeah. and detail. Would you want to, let's say for, for all intents and purposes, would you want to program it by open code? No, not that. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a little different, right? Yeah, you rather have some sort of equivalent in terms of the open flow level, you really can specify the resource constraint kind of thing. On its, in its structure itself. But also the way you the way you would control your your big switch is a more prescribed fashion. And it's more like a, it's it's nearly API calls. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's more of an API call rather than a low level. Um, even intent might be too low level in some way. You want you, you want to be able to say things like create create circuit between this point and this point. Right? And so that's a whole different notion than creating. You could you could have an intent that does that, but then it's API call. Right? <laughs> So, uh, so another thing from the greater e chord is that some multi layer network case. So, that will be out of the scope of this. I mean, we will have a structure that optical circuit will give you a packet layer link that is sort of like a, something is realized by, mm -hmm. which is going to look pretty much similar to this. Some network realizes another virtual network. Yes, view. exactly. Yes, so exactly. Should, should that kind of thing be looking at this, or if the multi layer control should be something else? Not the virtual networks. Well, so I, I think we should be using as, as much of the same mechanism as possible, right? But but the federation mechanisms right now, both in, as it is explored by the eCore use case as well as by as it's explored by Icona, essentially, and also by ACTM, will all require some level of virtualization at least to 
do you have an external projection out of the uh, control domain, administrative or control domain outwards to either peers or to the hierarchy, upper hierarchy? They need to encapsulate certain level of details and thus provide a virtual view. I think it should be possible to use this functionality to support that. And now, now, for example, in case of ACT and how they talk about virtual network externally, you know, there will be through Yang models and all of that stuff. So clearly, the, how the talking will happen will be different. But but underneath it, the the rest resting on top of it should be able to rest on top of this functionality. Create a virtual network that for on behalf of projecting it to the outside. Right? I don't see I mean. Clearly, uh, there's no problem with having some competing approaches just to add flexibility and because the different approaches may have, may have different strengths and different caveats. It's, it's okay to do that, but I think there's also, we should also look for points of leverage, especially if there is not a necessarily good reason to have not, you know, to do To write two different pieces of code that do the same thing in the same way or very similar way. Um, but there's no reason to do that, right? Unless you're going to do things in a different way and therefore have different external characteristics. So I would say, I would say we should try to use this as much as possible, and so therefore we, it's important to capture the requirements. Okay, so I'll I capture these to do items and suggestions and. And uh, send a message to the um, on our staff for soliciting feedback. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording.